So I was recently invited to do a talk to a group of Go engineers that work at Just Eat. It's kind of like an Uber Eats, but I think they are just located in the UK where the topic of the talk was building open source Go projects in public. Now, I don't do a lot of talks. I don't really do a lot of these kind of conversations with, you know, niche groups of individuals, but I thought this topic was really interesting and the feedback I got was really positive. So I decided why not make a YouTube video, polish the talk and kind of expanded to a broader audience. Now, obviously the main project I had in mind that this kind of revolved around was Go Blueprint, which is a project that uh, I created and maintain with the help of the community that allows the user to spin up quick Go projects using a popular framework. Here's an example of what happens. So you can choose Postgres, Fiber, any of the advanced options, and this will be the structure of your project. If you are interested, the link will be in the description down below. But not focusing on Go Blueprint, I wanna focus on kind of the aspects of building open source Go projects in public. And maybe we don't even need to focus on the Go portion, but just building open source projects in public and why these two things, you know, building open source and building in public are completely different. So I started this conversation talking about who I am. I'm going to kind of gloss over this part, but if you are watching this, make sure you click subscribe. It does help the channel quite a bit. A large portion of people who view my content don't click subscribe. So, you know, if just one click and it, it makes a world of difference. So I talk about who I am, how I got started with Go, and then I talk about kind of building using Go. And this is kind of the start of the conversation where I really had zero experience with the Go programming language until I started at Twitch. I was hired previously as pretty much just a Python engineer who knew a little bit of React. And then uh, they hired me and they said, hey, we use Go here. That's what we have you to do. And I thought they were going to fire me right away because I didn't know any go. They had expectations for me. And uh, luckily for me that being hired as a junior at the time, I was able to pick up go relatively easily. It's not because I am this smart individual, of course I worked hard, but it's because Go allows users to pick it up easily and to understand it quickly. And I said like, as all of us, I quickly fell in love with Go because of how fast I was able to build, which led me to building open source Go projects. And again, we can just remove the Go part, but just building open source projects. And I list some of my favorite open source libraries, which include NeoVimChi, Docker, Gorilla, GoAuth, and a lot more, especially around the Go ecosystem. I think talking about the benefits is going to be kind of straightforward. You have enhanced collaboration. So with Go Blueprint, the main maintainers right now, I would say I don't even have that title. The main maintainer is a contributor named UJ Store this individual right here, who is just an absolute legend. He helps so much with the Go Blueprint project and it allows for this amazing collaboration where we talked on Discord, talked on GitHub of what ideas we wanna implement and how. The increased transparency is such an interesting topic because if you've ever been interested in knowing how your favorite library works, you could literally go in and check it out. Like there is no secrets anymore. There's no like, oh, this is like two thirds of it or kind of like what Twitter did when they released the algorithm, but that was only like a marketing stunt, like that isn't really the actual algorithm. They may have shown like some of the ETL jobs using Scala, but if you look, they haven't updated that in how long now? There's no secrets here. You can see when we update it, what we do to update it, how it works, the steps, and you know, what we use behind the scenes, which in this case is Charm and a lot of other cool projects like Cobra. And then obviously it's brought in the skill development. So I truly believe that the best way to be a better programmer is to code. And a lot of the people that I come across are always questioning, how do I get better? What do I build? And I had a few videos on this, but if you really don't have an idea of what to build, go to your favorite open source project, take a ticket, find an issue and try to solve it. Even if you don't successfully solve it, you can still solve it. You can still do some work. And I think that really does wonders for an individual's development as an engineer. But I end off this section by saying building open source does not equal building in public because it may be obvious, but all because your project is available to the public when you post on GitHub or GitLab or whatever it is, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are building it in public. I use the analogy, if you're familiar with data systems or machine learning systems of a batch system, engineering flow versus a real-time streaming processing flow, where building open source projects would be kind of the batch equivalent. You kind of go behind the scenes, do what you want, and then showcase your work at a commit or a push cadence. Whereas in building in public, like live streaming or anything similar, you're getting instantaneous feedback right away where the analogy is streaming. It's inputs and outputs continuously without an end 
Well, I guess they do end when you click end of the stream, but let's not get into the details of it. So I talk about building in public where it's kind of this newer concept. It's primarily happening on Twitch and on YouTube Live, which if you haven't already, go check my Twitch. But it can happen anywhere where there's a real-time feedback loop, which means anytime you click a key on your keyboard or implement a function or even implement a variable, you have this ability for someone viewing you to make a comment on that right away. And to emphasize my point about the benefits of building in public, I made this diagram, which is kind of what happens when you don't build in public. And the typical cycle is you have this idea, you go ahead and you buy a domain. We know this popular area right here. We all know this. This is where you buy a domain. Domain buying. Okay. And then you go ahead and build the idea. You, you scrap it up. You're like, oh, this could be the best idea ever. You go ahead and launch and then you get your feedback. And 99% of the time, the feedback is that no one uses your app. I mean, I hate to be that person to say it, but it's true. A lot of the time you are building for no users. You may be having the wrong idea. Your idea could be completely stinky or you may be going about it the complete wrong way. So your feedback is like after building, after launching, you finally get the feedback that your idea is just shit. And there's nothing wrong with that besides the fact that now you spent this much time, however long it takes to build, hopefully it's just a couple of weeks, but sometimes it's months depending on the scale of the project. And then the feedback is not so positive. Whereas when you build in public, you kind of expand and you add this new feedback cycle. So you have this idea, you go through domain purchasing hell, you build, but as you're building, when you build in public, you get this instantaneous feedback from your viewer saying, this is a good idea. This is an interesting idea. What's your projects? Can you explain to me in 30 seconds or not? And then you realize, oh shit, I can't explain in 30 seconds. What do I do? So this is where I truly have benefited a lot using this instantaneous feedback. It's allowed me to polish some of the projects I've made live on Twitch. And the best part about this is when we go back to Go Blueprint example, Go Blueprint didn't start off as Go Blueprint. It originally was this Ragstack Lambda project that I had that I was building in public. Rag stands for React, AWS, and Go. It's also a CLI project and it allows you to spin up a professional stack using React on the front end, AWS as the infrastructure and go on the back end. However, the whole time I was building it, I was getting feedback that people didn't care about the React part. People didn't care or even truly want to understand the AWS part, but people wanted to know more about how to structure a Go project. And I actually ignored it to my detriment because I released I launched this rag stack. It got no buzz. Nobody cared for it. Completely understandable. I still had fun making it. Not a big deal. But then I said, you know what? What the hell? People want me to make this quick, you know, go project CLI thing. Let me just rip out the logic that's way more complicated in the rag stack. And let me just focus on go. How hard can it be? Wasn't that hard. Took me a couple of weeks. People absolutely loved it, right? People went crazy for it. People loved it. And the contributors wanted to work on it. People wanted to make it better. People had ideas. People were engaged and people gave me their feedback, which allowed me to build, launch and get even more feedback. And the idea is still alive and well today. And that is how Go Blueprint, in my opinion, is a combination of building open source projects and building in pu public. And it's one of the most successful things I have had the honor of building. So if you were to take anything from this video, it's uh, hopefully you are now a little bit more motivated to build open source and build in public. And even if you don't like building in public, you don't have to have your face on the screen, go live on Twitch or whatever. Do open source, do things that get your projects out of the way, whatever that means. You know, this was just an example of how it benefited me and continues to benefit me throughout my career. But let me know what you have done to really get you to the next level. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.